The vitamin that has been proclaimed as a potential protector against every disease we know of, from cancer to heart disease and diabetes to mood disorders like depression, has been ongoing and pretty controversial. So Amid's ample evidence recommends that this vitamin supplementation specifically for the prevention of falls and fractures by increasing calcium level in the body, some people are concerned that this high calcium level may actually go somewhere else and promote blood vessel calcification and heart disease among those who are low in certain levels of specific vitamins. So what's with this vitamin and is it safe to be taken long term? Let's watch this. Often so-called the sunshine vitamin, vitamin D, has been shown to be abundant in fatty fish and fish oil, but it is likewise produced by your skin when it is exposed to sunlight. One of the vitamin D's primary functions is to promote calcium absorption and maintain adequate calcium levels in your blood, which means a vitamin D deficiency may cause bone loss. I'm sure you're one of the many who are presently on vitamin D supplementation. However, here's the controversy. Vitamin D does not fully control where the calcium in your body ends up. So what are we worried about is that the increase in calcium will instead deposit and end up somewhere else instead of the bone. So in hypercalcemia, or a state where there is high calcium level in the blood, both calcium and phosphorus become so high that calcium phosphate starts to accumulate in the lining of the blood vessels. So according to experts, blood vessel calcification or deposits of calcium in the blood vessel is one of the main underlying causes of heart disease. So is there a way or a possible way that this should not happen. So if you are taking vitamin D supplements, please continue to listen. Observational studies have linked low vitamin K levels to an increased risk of blood vessel calcification. It has been shown in certain studies that vitamin K supplements may actually reduce the chances that you're going to have calcification of your blood vessel wall. So therefore, People who get high amounts of vitamin K2 from their diet are actually at reduced risk of blood vessel calcification and eventually developing heart disease. So the recommendation for now, based on preliminary data, is to make sure that when you take vitamin D supplements to always have adequate amounts of vitamin K for calcium to be properly handled and be used for bone health. Both vitamin D and vitamin K has been shown to work as a team. Vitamin K has been shown to help regulate your calcium in your body in at least two ways. It activates a substance called osteocalcin, which is a protein that promotes the accumulation of calcium in your bones and teeth. Likewise, when you have enough vitamin K, it activates the matrix GLA protein, which then prevents the calcium from accumulating in the kidneys and the blood vessels. At this point, though, I must admit, we only have few controlled human studies to have investigated the effects of vitamin K supplements on blood vessel calcification, especially on its role on vascular calcification in the development of chronic diseases like hypertension, but more studies are underway. In our foods, vitamin D is generally most abundant in high-fat foods and their absorption in the bloodstream is enhanced when they are consumed with fat. Similarly, 
Vitamin K, on the other hand, is found in leafy greens, fermented legumes, and vegetables, as well as some fatty animal source foods, such as egg yolk, liver, and cheese. So in summary, one of the vitamin D's main functions is to ensure adequate levels of calcium in the blood. That's one of the reasons that we take calcium specifically among menopausal women. However, vitamin K has been shown to promote the calcium accumulation in your bones while reducing accumulation in soft tissues, such as the blood vessels. Put simply, vitamin D toxicity may cause blood vessel calcification while vitamin K may help prevent this from happening. Scientists at present really don't know whether vitamin D intake is harmful when vitamin K intake is inadequate. However, preliminary evidence suggests it might be of concern, but the definite conclusion cannot be reached at this point. So for now, if you're taking vitamin D supplementation, make sure you're also taking enough vitamin K or your vitamin D supplements should have vitamin K in it at the same time. Again, this is Dr. Jerry Tan. Stay safe. Listen for more health information in this YouTube channel. Thank you and see you again soon.